constantly go wrong. <laughs> We call ourselves the uh, rat bag style masters. Uh, when you yeah, yes. Just going to read to it? Yeah, when you're with, when you're with Ken, it's the rat bag style masters. So that's all we are for the minute. Thank the rat bag style masters. <laughs> Very good. Uh, now, uh, uh, working with Slim Dusty back in the day is a, is a, is a big honour. But as it gets, time goes on, you know, I'm sort of caught up with it a little bit, I suppose, because people say, talk, what's it like working with Slim? What's it like working with Slim? I didn't work with Slim all that long, you know, like, I started in uh, 82, and the works were re recorded in 83, and the movie 84, and I've sort of finished up in 85, so there's only enough small number of years that I got to work with, with uh, Slim and the band and the show. So, it's probably the greatest experience, the most maturing experience for me in my life, and most people, of all the things that I've done, the two shows last year and working with Slim, people want to know about that. They want to know about Slim, not the two shows last year. So, go figure. Um, anyway, the thing is, I, I, I got to play this part in the movie and um, I was just, you know, bumming along and, uh, and, and sort of mimicking Slim really back in the day. And I loved everything about it. I loved his Australian. I love Australian stuff, particularly Australian cars, Holden, Falcon and Valiant. Now I say that because I have probably in the next week or two, I, I hope the radio plays it. We've, seen it. we've got a, a thing called uh, Kevin Taylor's Classic Australian Car Wars Trilogy. And it's, there's a, um, a song called I Want to Drive a Ford, um, another one called Nothing But a Hole, and another one called Valiant Boy Mopar Man, which I hope will be on the radio in the next few weeks. So it's keep here, Kevin Taylor's Classic Australian Car Wars Trilogy. And uh, that's something new, I hope to hear. But the reason I say all that is because when I started the music, it really wasn't country music per se that got me in. It was the Australianness of Slim, how authentic he was. It wasn't cowboy music. This was rigid ditch Bushman music. You get these writers that seem to know, you know, in, from my home, North Queensland. I recognise the things in the songs. I went, man, this guy. This, I wouldn't have said man back in that. Well, back in that day, or said <laughs> shivers. This guy knows what he's on about. I mean, this black man knows what he's on about. That's what I would have said while I was sipping my quart pot and smoking my cigarette. But anyway, he was he was so authentic. He was 30. And I, <laughs> yeah, that's a it's a wonderful memory for a seven year old. The uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, it's going to pay. Um, anyway, I got into Slim, and then. Uh, as, uh, as time progressed, they, they made this movie. Uh, uh, I was working for a drilling company up north, and the producer of the movie came and wanted to meet all sorts of people that um, enjoyed Slim's music. And you know, the, the boss of the drilling company was the president of the Country Music Club, and they ran a festival in Charles Towers. Anybody been to Charles Towers Country Music Festival? If you haven't, go this year, May, May Day weekend. We've got a holiday again now. Um, shoot up to Charles Towers. I'll actually be back because it's the 40th anniversary and I asked them if I could come. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, Charlie Sounds was it and, and he said, oh, this is this young guy that, uh, that likes Slim and I you know, sang a bit of stuff for him and uh, eventually said, I think Slim would like to meet you and one thing led to the other and I got an opportunity to be in this movie. Um, so, the only downside of it is, I guess, is that if you haven't seen the movie, how many people have seen the movie for a start? Okay, that's not bad. I don't usually get that sort of percentage. <laughs> Just in case, how many people haven't seen the movie? That should be everybody else. But uh, often it isn't. But most times, God, when is this going to stop? Um, so what happens is, for those who haven't seen it, I'm sitting in the crowd, allegedly with a, an actor girlfriend, and uh, my wife makes me say that. Um, and. We, uh, we Slim starts singing this song and it goes, And the biggest disappointment in the family was me. He said, Oh, wait, wait, wait. And he stops the band and he goes, This song reminds me of someone. And he calls me out of the crowd, so <laughs> take it away. But anyway, in case you ever see it, even though I looked nothing like it did when I was 19, this is the song. Turn 
fifteen I caught the mail train Brian Wells might be in with me But I rode on trucks and trains and lived on nothing Serves me right for wanting to be free Ah well that's the way society looks at it Seem to be that way to me. Yeah. And the biggest disappointment in the family was me. The only twist and branch upon our good old family tree. I just couldn't be the person they expected me to be. And the biggest disappointment in the world was me. When I was in town yeah. And the biggest disappointment In the family was me The only twisted branch Upon our good old family tree I just couldn't be The person they expected me to be And the biggest disappointment In the world was me Yes, the biggest disappointment Upon our good old family tree, I just couldn't be the person they expected me to be. And the biggest disappointment in the world was me. That's the one. All right. Who's ever heard of a bloke called Jeff Mack? You know? Jeff Mack is a bloke who wrote... Who, well, let, let's, let's start again. Who's ever heard a song that goes, I've been everywhere, man, I've been... Have you heard that? That's written by a bloke called Jeff Mack. Jeff Mack um, was a mechanic. He had a, a, a jazz and vaudevilles type comedy band. And the is called Jeff Mack and the Mack Annex. And he's always written funny little songs. Just silly little songs. Good, uh, good fun, and uh, because he was a mechanic, he owned a, a little bus company, and he used to t uh, hire the buses to the Slim Dusty show, drive the bus, and do the comedy spot. Um, great guy, a wonderful guy, and there's just a little bit for the band to pick up at the end of this one, just the last few bars, but the rest of it I'll just, I'll try and do like Jeff did. So, when we were out, um, when we were out on the road, he used to tell this story, and he used to say, you know, I think we've been just about everywhere in Australia. We've been down to um, Tasmania, we've been up to Cape York, we've been over to Western Australia, we've been as far east as Byron Bay, and that's as far as you can go without getting your feet wet, so we've covered a bit of country. And I don't think there's a single square inch of Australia where you can't find a little creature called the red-backed spider. They're everywhere, under every drum, you know, under every windowsill, in the ceiling, sometimes on the toilet seat. Now a few years ago, a bloke called Slim Newton wrote a song about the red back on the toilet seat. I don't know how many of you know it, but just in case no one's ever heard it, I'll try, I'll try and do a little bit of it, all right? This is, a, this is a part of, as long as I can do it, Slim Newton's red back on the toilet seat. There was a red back on the toilet seat when I was there last night. I didn't see him in the dark, but boy, I felt his bite. And now I'm in the hospital of sad and sorry plight. I cursed the red back spider on the toilet seat last night. Oh. I ran 
raced it to the missus, showed her just where I'd been bit. She grabbed a cutthroat razor and I nearly had a fit. I said, forget what's on your mind and call the doctor, please. I've got a feeling that your cure is worse than the disease. There was a red book on the toilet seat when I was there last night. I couldn't see him in the dark, but I felt his bite. And now I'm in the hospital in sad and sorry plight. I cursed the red back spider on the toilet seat last night. <laughs> well, that's about half the old Slim Newton's red back on the toilet seat. But I've often wondered what would have happened if this red back wasn't an Australian creature, but was an American one. And maybe Johnny Cash or some big star, let's say Johnny Cash, for, for argument's sake, was bitten in the same circumstances, you know, more on the circuit than the stances. And I wonder, I wonder what he would have said about the old spider. I wonder if it would have went something like this. Let's see, maybe it went something like this. No, or something like this. Or something like this. Coming in my rear, I'm telling you the truth, boy. This ain't no bum steer. I feel that red back spider man is really burning down. Oh, that dirty red back spider nailing me to the death of me. Cause that bite is a painful thing. That bite. As a powerful sting, you know, already that time. <laughs> I quenched all desire. I'm suffering from a ring of fire. Hey, I'm suffering from a burning ring of fire. It goes down, down, down the nose to red lips get higher. And it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire. The ring of fire. So if to the country toilet you should go, there is one thing I'd like you all to know. Those redneck spiders seldom can be seen. So spray the seat first with more tea. So spray the seat.